Welcome to Eat Your Backyard, my YouTube channel where I talk all about fruit trees and ornamentals and cool tropical, subtropical stuff. In this video, I'm doing a continuation on one I, cut, I made earlier about my areca palm and the need to trim it back to keep it looking good. It was very tall next to these power lines here and I trimmed it down to a clump, let it regrow. It regrows very vigorously, loves to be trimmed. Uh, today I'm going to show you how once it turns into this bush-like thing to give it some definition because as you can see this isn't a great look. It kind of looks like a palm shrub which is not what uh, I think anybody really wants. <clears throat> so I have two tools. One is the indispensable Sawzall. Love this. You can just cut right down into the dirt with it and this will make quick work of that thing. And the other thing is going to be just these loppers which I'll use to kind of fine-tune. I'll give you some tips there. So let's get started with the Sawzall. All right. First of all, let's get an idea for what we're working with here. get rid of all these little palms down here but the first thing I want to do is be able to see what I'm cutting so I'm just going to now one thing for sure is when you make the cuts you want to make sure you get them as close as possible you don't want to leave what I call stubs this whole piece is going to fall off once it dries out and dies but in the meantime you don't want to have stubs sticking out it's not a good look so let's keep that going I don't need to leave many, many fronds attached. This tree will come right back and I don't want to have, have a lot of fronds on there. It really won't slow down the, the growth of it much at all just to have a few left. So each one I'll probably leave about three or four fronds on and trim the rest up so I can see the stalk. All right, now I'm getting a better picture of what's going on here. And some of them just come right off, they're already dried. All right, this one can go. Now, these little ones on the bottom, I have no interest in keeping at all. If you had one in a place you wanted to grow it, you might leave it, but this one is not. So this is kind of interesting. I notice it does this sometimes. It'll grow like a little side shoot off of the main stalk. I want to get rid of that, but here's one left over from the Get it all as close to the trunk as possible. All right, now we're starting to get a look. Check this out. That's why they call it the sugar cane palm. It's because it has these really cool this look. You can see how it's, it's uh, kind of a white and then to a green. It'll actually get reds in it and yellows, and it looks really cool, almost like a sugar cane or bamboo. It's growing. loppers and eating it up. You can see it's really starting to look much better now. Right, let's get started on this side a little bit. That looks pretty good. Now you can see where I stumped it here. You know, uh, I was dealing with a lot of them at that point, so I didn't really spend too much time on it. But it's not a good look leaving these here.
some of these older older stumps are really really dense that was one that was probably 30 feet tall actually when I chopped it down okay yeah come around on this side of okay. yeah most of this this side is really looking I want <laughs> the old saw the saw the power cord of your saw trick you don't want to do that get it out of the way always know where the where the blade is going and where the power cord is so you don't mistakenly hit it there we go I like to keep it all bundled up so I can pick it up easily have a lot of these Pretty easy to tell why we use the sawzall because it just makes fast work of the of the job. It'll also make fast work of your finger or your leg, so you want to think it through. Uh, I've seen people get free and easy with a saw, and I've seen exactly how that can uh, end up. So you want to be very careful. Stack this right in there, so I want to come around with the yard waste can. Now this one. Oh, that's interesting. Pick that up. This one's growing. A, oh, maybe that is the primary. No, it isn't. This one's growing too out of the center part. I'm going to leave it. The main thing I'm looking for here is to have not, look at that nub. Is to get the larger canes. You know, I've got the larger palm trunks. Got one, two, three, four, five, six. That's more than enough for what I'm trying to accomplish here. This has got so much here, but I think I'll tolerate it. All right, that one looks good. You see, I'm really trimming a lot of them off uh, on purpose. I'm going to take this one off too. You can see, it's all tied up here. This is still some Hurricane Matthew. We are getting there. Now oh, this one's another double trunk. You know, you know what? I may choose to get rid of this one later. You don't want to have it up against your roof line, really. That's the thing. Uh, I'll probably get them with the loppers. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I'll get the loppers right now. All right, this this one's going. Eh, I'll leave it. <laughs> 
Okay, come take a look at this. One thing that loves to be in an Eureka palm are ants, sugar ants, ghost ants, all the kind of ants that plague us. And uh, they love the sap, they love to build nests in here. That's one of the reasons I consider just totally getting rid of this thing. But if you have the fronds hitting your, your roof, you've created a perfect little, little uh, pathway for them to get in there. So in this case, I want to enjoy the way it looks. I don't want to touch my roof, so I'm just going to go ahead and turn off some of the ends that are more prone to hit it. And then you have to kind of keep an eye. Make sure, now I go in between, try to make a clean cut like that. But look at this one. That's not good because it's going towards that power line there. Hmm. Yeah. I'll spare it for now, but I can tell I'm going to have to get rid of it because I don't want to get back in the same situation. It's still hurricane debris up in everything right now, but it's getting cleaned out. So, all right, back it up just a little bit so you can see what it looks like. Yeah, I go way back. Just to... All right, that's a pretty good look. All right, so here we have it, a nicely trimmed, and you can see it's night and day. Night and day, and obviously there'll be a little bit more cleanup I'll want to do on it, but it's essentially done. A night and day difference. Now it does look like a well-defined clump of trees clump of palms. I don't have it up against my uh, air conditioning unit or up against my house. So really all in all, this is exactly what I was trying to accomplish. Uh, looking good, so don't be afraid to trim your Eureka palm. If it gets too tall, stump it, clump it, and then reform it just like this. Pick some of the bigger ones and it'll look great. And you can do this over and over and over. I don't know what the limit is, but this thing is probably 35 years old and it's still vigorous. You can tell it's got a big ball of all the past Deals like that, but it looks really, really good. All right, well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like videos like this, please subscribe to Eat Your Backyard. Uh, and also like it if you like it.